when I was in high school, I was interested more in reading novels than in memorizing school textbooks. But there was pressure on me from my teachers to study hard and score well in tests. They thought that I would fail. I wanted to get high score, but I did not want to study. So I began to search for a suitable solution. Luck was on my side. I came across a book that gave me the magical solution I was looking for. All I had to do was to see in my mind, in my imagination, my textbooks. Every night before I go to sleep for a few minutes and tell myself a few times that I had studied well and that I would get super score. I like the method very much, who would not? I practiced it sincerely for a few days before my test. I did not go through my textbooks even once. On the day of my test, there was a flash flood in my place. The test was cancelled. I did not fail. I shared the secret of my success with others. My teacher came to know about it and asked me a few simple questions from the textbooks. I could not answer even one. She scolded me for my foolishness and my superstition and then gave me a list of important topics to concentrate on. I studied only those topics in the next few days. I read the textbooks physically, not in my imagination. I secured reasonably good scores. But I did not want to lose face. I did not admit even to myself that my solution was not real. I explained to myself that the method did work well by making my teacher help me. When I grew up, I became rational and I trained my mind not to believe in anything that was not supported by acceptable evidence, reliable data and explanations from experts. A few years later, I came across an interesting article that discussed the relationship between mind and body. That article argued that mind can determine body, but normally it is a slave to body. Mind can make body respond, but most of the time we do not, we do what our bodies want and we justify it. We do not feel that we are the masters of our bodies. We feel in many ways that the body functions on its own. This article illustrated the power of mind over body through a true story. The outcome of this power was termed as, termed as uh, the placebo effect. A placebo is not a real scientific medical treatment or drug. It is something that seems to be a real medical treatment or a real drug. A pill, an injection, a shot, a news item, but it has the effect of a real medicine. Placebos do not contain an active medical substance meant to affect health. Immediately I remembered my secret, yet sincere preparation method for my test in high school and wondered whether this placebo was something similar to my magical study method. But the true story reported in the article was very different from my silly personal story. An American developed two large tumors in his stomach during the 1950s. When he was on his deathbed, he read, he read in the newspaper about a serum that cured horses of cancerous tumors. He pleaded with his doctor to administer this drug to him. The doctor thought the patient would die in a few days, 
no matter what he did. So the doctor agreed to administer the drug to the patient. To his great surprise or great dismay, two days later the tumors were completely gone. The patient became active, became active. After a few weeks, the patient read in another article about the same serum in the same newspaper. It reported that the serum worked only on horses. It did not work against cancer in human beings. Two days later, the tumors came back to the original full size. The doctor understood that something was happening here. Whether the serum was working or not, something was happening. He spoke to the patient who was again on his deathbed and told him that he had found a super double strength version of the serum, which had been successful in curing cancer in human beings. The doctor gave the patient a few shots of water. Two days later, the tumors completely disappeared. Two months after that, the man read in another newspaper that no one had ever been cured by that serum. It was a fake story. The patient died within a few days. What can this power be? Does the mind's belief or faith in something have such a tremendous power? Do we have to believe it? I became interested in the topic. I collected more information on placebo in order to understand it at deeper levels. In Japan, a healthcare provider studied patients who were severely allergic to poison ivy, a plant that causes intense skin rashes. When contracted by people who are severely allergic to it, the whole body is afflicted by rashes. The medical scientists rubbed an ordinary leaf on one arm of these highly allergic patients but told them that the leaf was poison ivy. They then rubbed real poison ivy on the patient's other arm, but, don't, but told them it was only a harmless, ordinary leaf. Out of 13 patients, 10 of them got ra rashes on the arm touched by the harmless leaf, but only three got any rash on the arm touched by the real poison ivy. They concluded that the effect of mind on our body is very powerful. Recently, I read an article published by Harvard Medical School. It said that uh, treating yourself with your mind was possible, but there was more to it than positive thinking. The article says that our mind can be a powerful healing tool when given the chance. The idea that our mind can convince our body of a fake treatment called the placebo effect is a real thing and that this type of healing has been around for thousands of years. Now science has found that under the right circumstances, in some cases, a placebo can be just as effective as traditional treatments. Professor Ted Kapchik director of the Harvard wide program in placebo studies says, the placebo effect is more than positive thinking. Believing a treatment or procedure will work. It is about creating a stronger connection between the mind and body and how they work together. How do researchers use placebo? They use placebos during studies to help them understand what effect a new drug or treatment might have on a patient in a particular condition. It is used in clinical trials to test the effectiveness of treatments. For example, people in one group get the tested drug while the others receive a fake drug or placebo that they think is the real thing. Then the researchers measure if the drug works by comparing how both groups react. If both groups have the same reaction, improvement or not, the drug is deemed not to work. Only when there is a difference in effect between the drug and placebo, 
the drug is deemed to work. After many clinical trials, experts have concluded that reacting to a placebo is not a proof that a certain treatment does not work. Now they say another non-pharmacological mechanism may be present. So what is this placebo effect? Sometimes a person can have a response to a placebo. The response can be positive or negative. For instance, the person's symptoms may improve or the person may have what appears to be side effects from the treatment. These responses are uh, the placebo effect. Placebos often work because people don't know they are getting one. A pharmaceutical company developed a new asthma inhaler. They tested it on two groups of people. One group was given real treatment. Other group was given placebo. Both groups believed they received real treatment. The researchers found that 45% of the patients who were using a placebo inhaler got the same relief as those using a real inhaler. There was placebo effect when people believed they were taking real medicine, though they were given placebo. But what happens if they know they are getting a placebo? There are certain conditions in which a placebo can produce results. Even when people know they are taking a placebo, this set of conditions is called the ritual of treatment. The patient has to go to a clinic at certain times and be examined by medical doctors in white coats. The patient receives pills and undergoes examination procedures. All these rituals can have an impact on how the body perceives symptoms because the patient feels he or she is getting attention and care. The researchers speculate that one of the driving forces is the simple act of taking a pill. People associate the ritual of taking medicine as a positive healing effect. Even if they know it is not medicine, the action itself can stimulate the brain into thinking the body is being healed. How placebo works is still not fully understood. It may involve a complex neurobiological reaction. It may include feel-good neurotransmitters like uh, uh, endorphins and dopamine, moods, emotional reactions, and self-awareness. All of it can have a positive benefit on health. The placebo effect is a way for our mind to tell the body what it needs to feel better. Research on uh, placebo effect has also studied the relationship between mind and body. One of the most common theories is that the placebo effect is due to a person's expectations or aspirations. If a patient expects a pill to do something, then the body's own chemistry may cause effects similar to what a real drug might have caused. Experts also say that there is a relationship between how strongly a person expects to have results and whether or not results occur. The intensity of aspiration for positive results has an important role in the outcome of the treatment. The stronger the feeling, the more likely it is that the person will experience positive effects. There may be a profound effect due to the interaction between a patient and healthcare provider. The level of faith that the patient places on the doctor may produce unexpected positive results. The same appears to be true for negative effects. If people expect to have side effects such as headaches or drowsiness, there is a greater chance of these reactions happening. Some studies 
show that there are actual physical changes that occur with the placebo effect. For instance, some studies have documented an increase in the body's production of endorphins, one of the body's natural pain relievers. Then uh, the fact that the placebo effect is tied to expectations does not make it fake. There are some problems with the placebo effect. It can be difficult to distinguish from the actual effects of a real drug during a study. We have scientific instruments to study our body, physical body, but we do not have any such scientific instruments to study our mind. The placebo that works for one person does not or may not work for another. So the solutions cannot be standardized as it is done in drugs. Then there are legal issues and ethical issues. Now, I have a few questions, five questions. Can mind influence body? Can expectations and aspirations of mind influence health of our body? Researchers say children respond to placebo more than adults do. What can be the reason behind it? Can relationship between patient and doctor the faith that the patient places on the doctor improve the outcome of treatment. Placebo works only under certain conditions of mind and is dependent on the way we think. If the functioning of mind is taken into account, can creative healthcare solution be invented? Search engine experts and healthcare service providers advise that the patients should avoid arriving at conclusions based on online research about their health conditions and symptoms. Unnecessary thinking, unwanted data, complicate health conditions. The effect on health can be positive or negative depending on the input mind receives. Can this be true? Thank you.